When I was younger, I had a love for taking courses and workshops. They weren't for work or anything like that. I never actually put most of them to use, but for some reason the idea of knowing more called to me. At the time, I also had a job, so this was my routine every Thursday evening. Wake up, get ready for work, leave the house at about 7am to be at work at 8am, spend the day at work, get out and go straight to the workshop I had planned for the week, which would take me until about 7.30pm. Leave from there, get a burger from the Burger King on the way home, and eat on the sofa while watching a movie with my dog, Lucky, and straight to bed after. I could have done the workshops from home on my PC, but I just enjoyed being in a classroom with other people. This routine, as much as I loved it, was probably what got me in trouble. For weeks I kept noticing the same guy watching me as I left work and went to my workshops. They were all in the same place, so I wasn't that hard to track, which was making me even more uncomfortable. Until the week before, I hadn't been able to tell if this was the same guy I would come across after work, but on that one, I eliminated all my doubts. I left work as usual, noticed the guy was around, always in jeans but never in the same hat or sweater. When I finished my workshop, there he was. Instead of walking home this time, I called the police and waited. Lucky would have to wait a bit longer at home. When the police arrived and drove into the parking lot from inside the workshop place, I could see the guy panicking and scurrying away. He wouldn't have run if he wasn't doing anything wrong, but I just hoped this would scare him off. I was so wrong. The next Thursday I went back to my full routine, but I searched for this man in the parking lot when I left work, and I couldn't find him, so I relaxed and went happily about my day. Same in the workshop's parking lot. The guy was nowhere to be seen. I got in my car, stopped by Burger King, asked for two packets of fries instead of one since this was a happy and creep-free day, and drove home, anxious to watch the last episodes of the latest Stranger Things season. Lucky didn't seem to love the mind player thing too much, but it didn't bother me. When I got on the driveway, put the car to park, and the engine stopped, I thought I heard Lucky cry. Silly dog was probably anxious to go for a walk or something. This was not unheard of. I picked my bag up, stepped outside, closed the door behind me and locked the car. When I turned around, my heart stopped. The front door. It seemed close from inside the car, but now that I was a little closer I could tell it actually wasn't. On the other side, Lucky was whimpering slightly while clawing and scratching at the door without much success in getting out. I rushed to the door, reassuring him on the way, and opened it slightly as soon as I could reach it. Lucky flew out, but our garden was fenced, so I didn't worry for him or anything. Instead, I was worried about figuring out what happened to the door. Why was it not locked? I pushed the door fully open, and uh, got my answer straight away. At the other end, standing in the door frame leading to the living room, a figure of a man stood, as if he was waiting for me and from the light coming from outside I could tell. This was the stalker. As I realized this, he started running toward me. I let out a scream that must have alerted half the neighborhood. I slammed the door in my own face and darted towards Lucky, who was trying to scratch the garden gate open. My heart was about to explode. I picked him up, opened the gate and slammed it behind me, just as I heard my house door opening. The panic that was running through me was so intense that I almost tripped on my own feet while crossing the road. I was screaming in discernible words, just trying to get the word HELP out. I could hear his steps, running onto the pavement, coming closer. When I finally reached the door of my front neighbors, I, I tripped on one of the steps and almost fell over Lucky. I had to put my opposite shoulder first so I didn't hurt him, and almost slammed the door open with the force I hit it with. I finally managed to screech out the fucking word. I turned around and the guy was running halfway towards me, but... As I tried to somehow ghost mode through the door, I heard steps running inside and the door opened suddenly. I lost my balance and fell backwards into the house. My friend's confused eyes met the panic in mine and she wondered what the hell was going on. I managed to scream at her to close it while I hugged Lucky against the handrail and saw her turn her eyes. See the man reaching the last step going into their porch and slammed the door on him so hard I thought it was going to bounce back and open again. Her dad showed up, phone in hand, dialing the police while he ran towards the living room window. He kept shouting, what the hell? 
when the operator answered, but the relief of feeling safe took over from then, and I can't remember anything of what they said on the phone. I was just glad I was alive. The police eventually showed up, but they never found the guy. It's been years now since that happened, but I never heard anything about an arrest done on him. Though I haven't seen him since, and even though I'm not really a violent person, somehow deep inside me, I wish he's dead in a ditch somewhere. Above all, I hope we never meet again.